Hello everyone, semi-retired Bob here. I talk about the carnivore diet, all things related to the carnivore diet, and miscellaneous odds and ends. Um, today we're going to talk about keeping it affordable. Um, because everybody's always worried about how expensive eating all this meat could be. So I'm going to give you some quick tips about how to keep it more affordable. But first I do want to talk about one other thing. For those of you that are new to the channel, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Um, I'm very happy you're here. Uh, I hope you enjoy your stay here. For those of you returning to the channel, welcome back. I'm glad you tuned back in again. But let's just jump right into this. I was uh, watching an interview with one of the YouTubers that I've just started following, um, and she was interviewing Michelle Hearn. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Michelle Hearn or not, but uh, she started off life as a marathoner um, and went to dietetics school. She was a dietitian. And several things they were teaching her struck her as wrong. I wouldn't even mention this because I just made a video about it a week ago, but I got angrier and angrier as I was watching this. Not at her. But as she was explaining the things that they were teaching her in dietetic school about, you know, eating carbs, spreading the carbs out, you know, when you're talking about a type of diabetic, how, and it's the same advice I got, which is why it made me so angry, you know, rather than having, you know, no carbs to correct your type 2 diabetes, they were saying, you know, you want to spread your carbs out and eat the same amount over the course of the day so that you're, you know, they call it con controlled carbs. Um, you know, the dietitian that I had at my doctor's office, you know, she had me on basically 60 carbs, three meals a day, and three 15-carb snacks. Well, if we do the math on that, 60 and 60 is 120, 180 plus 45, what is that? 225 carbs a day for a diabetic? That's insane. You know, and we won't even get into the whole keeping your insulin up all day so that you can never actually burn fat. We won't even get into all that. If you're interested in how all that works, I suggest you go check out Dr. Eric Westman. He has a, a very good program on this. He talks about it a lot on his YouTube channel. I know Dr. Westman, he's just a guy from some little university. Um, most of you probably never heard of it. Uh, what was the name of that little podunk university he's associated? Oh, yeah, Duke. He's at Duke University. So he probably knows a little bit about what he's talking about. So check out Dr. Eric Westman if you haven't done that already. But I just, sorry, I had to mention it because I was watching this interview with Michelle Hearn and she was describing what they were teaching her in dietetics school. And it just made me angry that they're still today teaching that same stupid stuff. Because if you're a diabetic, eating more carbs is not the answer. Even spreading them out over the course of the day is not the answer. It's very simple. Just stop pulling carbs down your neck. And in most cases, your type 2 diabetes will improve. And even if you're a type 1, the amount of insulin you need to keep that in check will continue to go down and down and down. Okay, but let's talk about this um, keeping it affordable. I first heard this from Dr. Chafee. So I want to make sure I give him credit for this. But um, if you think of the foods in Olympic medal formula, yes, grass-fed, grass-finished, as Dr. Barry says, panda massage meats, that is the gold medal food. It is obviously the best. Now you have to decide for yourself if the best food is what you can afford because if you can only if me i could afford to eat that stuff three or four days a month and then i'd have to fast the rest of the month and i'm not really interested in doing that the next level down grain 
finished beef and other grain finished meats. This is the silver metal food. Is it as good as the gold metal food? Well, no, the gold metal obviously wins, but the silver metal, metal food is still better than everything else. So if grain finished is all you can afford to eat on a daily basis, then by all means, that's what you should have. And then let's talk about the silver metal foods. This is where people always wanna want to push back. And you do have to do a little more research when you're buying silver metal foods. And when I say research, I mean, when you're in the store, flip it over, read the ingredients, look at the total carbs, look at, you know, the sugar. You're always going to have some bad stuff in, you know, hot dogs. Spam is one that I like to talk about a lot because I do like spam. Potted meat, any of the deli counter, lunch meats, um, any of that kind of stuff. If that's what you can afford, that's the silver metal food. Is it as good as the, that's the, the bronze metal food. Is it as good as the silver metal food? No. Is it as the gold metal food? No. But it is still better than everything else out there. You do not have to eat grass-fed, grass-finished, panda massage meat to see health benefits. Is it ideal? Yeah, if you can afford it, by all means, and I'm a big fan of supporting your local ranchers. The more we support our local ranchers and farmers, the better off we are. You know, if you can if you can find somebody that has chickens in your area that is selling eggs, by all means, buy your eggs from a farm. But if you can't afford that, get the you know, the, the so-called organic stuff from your grocery store, buy a better quality yet. And, but again, just the standard grocery store mass produced eggs, which, you know, I will confess that's what I use mostly because it's cheapest. I mean, I just got another three dozen um, from my local big box store for you know, it was like $4.25 for three dozen. I can afford that. Um, is Are they the best eggs? No. But the bronze metal food is still a lot better than everything else. So it doesn't have to be super expensive. I mean, I eat a lot of ground beef. I eat a lot of eggs. I seem to be doing okay with that. Do I think I could feel even better? I don't know. But I do know my bank account would not survive me trying to eat the silver and the gold metal foods every day. So I have to mix in some of the bronze metal foods. I do still occasionally enjoy a package of hot dogs. I buy the cheapest ground beef I can get my hands on. We've talked about this before. I still have several cases of Spam out in the garage. It used to be in the back of my truck, but now that I'm home again, it's in the garage. I have several cases of potted meat out there. Um, I don't use Spam and potted meat as much while I'm at home in Omaha because I get much better prices on food, on beef here, because, you know, Nebraska is the feedlot capital of the world. We have, you know, you can't, you can't throw a rock without hitting a feedlot. So there's lots of good deals on beef out here. And one other thing that I had heard it before on several other channels, but I was just recently re-watching through, um, you know, because I'm getting ready to move off grid. Um, but I was watching one of my favorite off-grid channels, The Green Dream Project. And they've got a homestead down in Arizona, but they were talking about making your own bone broth, which reminded me, and I had talked to my butcher, and he said, oh, sure, I can get you all that stuff. You can, if you talk to your butcher, they may not put it out on the shelf, but they have soup bones for sale in the butcher department. 
Now, most people, they just take a soup bone, they throw it in a big pot, and they make a big pot of soup with it. But you can get, you know, basically a dollar to two dollars a pound for soup bones. And you'll find that those come with an awful lot of meat left on them. So if you tell your butcher you want, say, 20 pounds of soup bones, then you take those home and you cook them however you will, whether it's in the oven or on the grill or whatever, you, you basically roast the whole batch for about 45 minutes. Then you cut all of the meat off and save that in a separate container. You're going to get some meat meals out of it. And then you take all the bones and some salt and then whatever other spices you may or may not tolerate. Throw all that in a big pot. I use a big crock pot. I've got one going right now. Hopefully in a next video or two, I'll show you what I what I made for bone broth for myself. It's the first time I've done this. So if it doesn't turn out right, I'll make some adjustments and, and let you know about that. But then you put it on low in the crock pot and let it, you know, you cover the whole thing up with, you put your bones and your spices in and then you fill it up with water. You cover it and you put it on low for about 48 hours and just let it sit there and simmer. Then you strain all the stuff off and the meat that you couldn't get cut off the bones originally will have separated from the bones in this process. So you put that in your meat container and then you strain the bone broth and it makes an excellent meal or so I'm told. I haven't actually tried any of it yet, but that's again a very cheap way, you know, buying soup bones and making your own bone broth and eating the meat off of those soup bones will get you many meals very cheaply. So this doesn't have to be expensive. Um, and once again, you know, if you can afford to go out to your local rancher and say, let, let me have the cow. And then you take that cow to a processor and say, cut this up into steaks and roasts and hamburgers and everything else and save me all the bones and parts that aren't edible so that I can boil it up into a bone broth. You know, if you can afford that, that's fantastic. I applaud you. That is the very best way to do this diet. However, most of us can't afford that. Um, so, you know, soup bones, spam, bologna, hot dogs, deli meats, any of that kind of stuff, are perfectly acceptable as long as you're looking at the carb counts and doing the best you can because I'm not dogmatic on this channel. We've talked about this many times. You just want to make sure that you're doing the best you can and attempting to get 1% better every day. Doing the best you can that is sustainable is the best way to go for each individual person. Now, what that will look like for each person is completely different. You have to make all those choices for yourself. But that's what I've got for you today on this fine Saturday. I hope you all are enjoying your weekend. Those of you still out on the low carb cruise, I hope you're having fun. But don't forget to get out there. Be 1% better today, tomorrow, every day. Have a great day, folks. I'll see you tomorrow.